Only those who risk going too far can possibly find out how far they can go. E.S. Eliot. Welcome to the Mountain Man Chronicles. These are the stories of our adventures, our family, and our friends, and of course, cannoli. Please join us as we explore our surroundings and discover just how far we can explore. I sincerely hope you enjoy our videos. Someone recently asked me what overlanding is. Overlanding to me is the exploration of the unknown, the spirit of adventure, and the thrill of learning. Overlanding isn't strictly about camping, off-roading, having cool rigs. Don't get me wrong, I love all of those things. Today's adventure explores ghost towns and forgotten homesteads in South Dakota. The first town we are setting out to see is Zell, South Dakota. Zell consists of several buildings, a cemetery, the St. Mary's Catholic Church, and school, which were built between 1883 and 1910. Imagine stepping back in time to see this church in its glory. Unfortunately, we could not venture into the graveyard due to the high snowdrifts. We wanted to go in and pay our respects to the spirits of those who came before us and left before us. I hope you enjoy it, the town of Zell. Right outside of Zell, we came across an old homestead in the distance and decided to take an unplanned detour. Always find these places amazing. Imagine what it would be like to step back in time and see how these people could vision a plot of land and think to themselves, I'm going to create my home here. Far away from anybody, a long way from any help, surviving on my own skills, a lot of prayers, and a foundation of hope. Eventually making a homestead that over, over time becomes a farm and eventually becomes back, turns back into what it just started. It's amazing what a dream can be and what it can become. This homestead looks like it was used in a not too distant past. I'm amazed by the craftsmanship, the level of detail. The barn still has the top on it. The sides stand strong and the foundation holds the weight. Although it's not in use, it stands tall and is a monument to those who braved the prairie and endured the, so the soil. I was not able to get close enough to take pictures of the inside. One of the things I do is I stand by a strict rule to not trespass. Even if the place is abandoned, someone still owns the land. I respect that. With the sun getting long in the sky, it was time to depart Zell and turn our trusty jeep towards the next part of our adventure. We were going to follow the Deadwood Trail and head towards Kappa, some 160 miles away. The information on this town was vague. That exploration is in our blood, so we thought we would take the chances and see what the prairie would offer. The gamble turned into gold. Would we make it to Kappa by nightfall? No, I don't think so. We'll have to stop for the night. In 1876, the Deadwood Trail began. It started where steamboats would dock in Fort Pierre. The goods would be transferred to oxygen-driven wagons for the grueling trip to Deadwood. Spurred on by the discovery of gold in 1875, hordes of prospectors, gamblers, storekeepers, and some bad people headed across creeks, prairies for a 200 mile journey to the Black Hills. The Black Hills were in the heart of the Great Sioux Nation. The fact they were trespassing on Indian land didn't stop them, and they kept coming from all directions. Towns like Kappa popped up along the way. Although I couldn't find a lot on Kappa, what I did find was quite interesting. Kappa was at, in its heyday, grew quickly, largely because it heated artesian well which would provide a hot baths and natural springs and a place to rest on your weary journey. What's left today was truly worth its weight at gold. One of the best finds we've found so far in South Dakota. Today, there's a few crumbling buildings, a church is the only thing really standing.
Capita is an amazing place. One has to wonder what it had been like to live here all those years ago. Knowing you're a week's ride from Fort Pierre, very remote, all alone, and no one to call for help. One word comes to mind, perseverance. To persevere was to survive, was to make it through another harsh summer, another rough winter. Today the buildings stand and are worthy of exploration. As Raylene and I explored the town, you could not help but to stand and listen and uh, listen to the wind and wonder what it would be like 140 years ago. The land is amazingly quiet and secluded. You could only hear the sounds of the prairie call and the coyotes calling in the background. These old towns do have stories to tell. The stories of perseverance, of dreams. They tell tales that we all can learn from. What I loved about this town is it wasn't scarred by modern times. There was no graffiti. We could not find any carving of people's names in the buildings. It was one of those places that you could sit and feel history right in front of you. I started out this trip by thinking about what Overland is to me. This town reminded me of why I'm an Overlander. Perseverance, strength, and the ability to survive no matter what. As always, if you've enjoyed the videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. I plan on keeping content fresh, exciting, and consistent. Thank you.